all the beautifications and how the architect um, built this property. I didn't take down any walls. What I did was I glorified and I beautified what he originally built. Uh, it's a Herbert Burns property, 1950. He did the Holiday House and also uh, the Hideaway as well. So bringing attention to all the details of what he originally created. So you guys, thank you again for being here. This is just the start of, of everything that I want to do here. Um, invite your friends and your family to experience old Hollywood, old Palm Springs, and then walk and see where they actually had their residence here and see how I re remade the, the details of what they had in their living rooms, their bedrooms, and their kitchens. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Have a blessed night. And again, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you to the staff, um, 849, and everyone that's here. You guys, you guys are all important to all of us, and you guys are the, are, are the backbone to our city. We, I appreciate you guys, and thank you for being here. Where's my co-chair? Get up here. What do you mean you spoke last time? Well, you, you can hold me up then. How's that? Come on up here. Uh, my name is Ted Briggs. This is uh, Mary Sue Allen. We are the co-chairs of the board of the LGBTQ Center. Thank you all for uh, starting the season with us. Uh, we're excited about all of the opportunities and challenges and, uh, and really just incredible programming that we're being developing and growing. And um, when we think about the center and where it's come from, um, we hearken back to a story that Brian Ricks, where are you, Brian? Somewhere there's a Brian Ricks in the crowd. There he is. <laughs> Brian Ricks in his backyard said to his friends, look, we need, we need to start a support for the center and we need you all to give money on a monthly or an annual basis. And the Ocotillo group started that day with 23 people in Brian's backyard. And here we are today with 260 of you, um, which is amazing. Um, so, some of you current Ocotillos, some of you future Ocotillos, as in tomorrow, the next day, next week. Um, uh, advanced thanks for all of that. Um, the last couple of years have been really uh, challenging coming back out of COVID, uh, re restructuring our programming, uh, finding an amazing renewed leader to come back with us. Um, our, our incredible staff got us through that as the backbone and the uh, just strength and spirit of this whole community. Uh, helping people day in and day out through a pandemic, giving of their own lives to help these people that needed help in a really challenging time. Uh, and now we're moving back into an area of thinking strategically about how we help the whole community and what we're doing overall. And the group of Ocotillos that provide us the foundation of support to do that uh, are what enables us to be able to get that done. So between the staff and you all and your support, we are humbled and appreciative and thankful for all that you give us. And um, this woman has been known to thank me for my hard work, um, and yet she is the rock. She is the person that stands there and makes us all be serious and makes us pay attention and gets stuff done. And I couldn't have done any of this work with our board uh, without her, and I love her. Mary Sue Allen, you're amazing. Thank you. Um, could our board members quick raise their hands? One, uh, we got Jody here, Michelle here, uh, our Albert over there. Hola, Albert. Um, here we go, Tom over there. Um, we have an amazing board. I want to thank you guys and, and women for all the work that you do with us. Um, I want to thank Albert and Willie and 849 for the amazing uh, uh, food and beverage tonight and for your continued support in every event that we do. And uh, David, thank you for this amazing venue and for allowing us to be the first to, to grace his presence. I remember it when it was a dilapidated hotel and friends stayed here. This is a huge upgrade, dude. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, beautiful work and thank you for your graciousness. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our main speaker tonight, since I've already dragged on as it has been, um, to our new and renewed CEO, Mr. Mike Thompson. I know her again, right? <laughs> and so I debated with opening with that or like, she's back. 
And so uh, it is so incredibly good to be home, right? I want to I want to thank our amazing board of directors for your tireless leadership through some really challenging times both COVID and then transitions that happen and then transitions that happen again and then transitions that happen again. And you were able to, through it, you know, keep the organization, you know, healthy and keep keep things happening because the work of the center continued, right? Through the board's leadership, but also through the dedication of this amazing team of staff that are so passionate and so dedicated and so committed to the work. You know, those that were family before um, I left, we had built such an amazing team doing amazing things. And then to come back and to have that team enhanced with the new talent that has been added and the pool of volunteers that show up consistently week after week to, to do their jobs and helping create the vibrant community that we're committed to create. And then to you, our donors, our specifically our Akateo Club donors. Like Ted said, in Brian's backyard, 23 people committed to support this work. And when I came into this job in the before times in 2014, we were a fledgling organization that couldn't meet its half a million dollar budget, but we had donors that were committed to this. We had community members that believed that this community needed a vibrant hub to make things happen in support of ourselves, right? Because when I went back to Oklahoma to care for my mom, my husband now, yes, now husband, believe it or not, I got married while we were away. And so um, my husband and I chose to go home to care for my mom. And in doing that, I realized I'm doing the very thing we talked about at the center is connecting people to resources and community because the pandemic affected my widowed mother who lived alone, who did everything she was supposed to do during the pandemic. And that isolation caused harm, right? And so it scared my brothers and I. So we felt like we needed to be back for our families to give her the care that we had been giving to a broader community. And our, the center's work of ending isolation and loneliness, connecting people to resources and community, and then enriching our individual and collective experience. But at the very core of that is connection because that's what we need to thrive in our lives and in community is connection. And that's what we are about at the center. So this has been such a beautiful homecoming for Ron and myself to be welcomed back to this community, to specifically the center community, because this idea of home, we know, right? We feel, we experience, but yet not everybody experiences that. So. In the in-between time, I'm calling it, I was the chief impact officer for Centerlink, which is the network of LGBT community centers. We had 328 member organizations, and I would work with CEOs and board leadership about the impact they're creating in their communities, and especially in conservative states, like where we just, from where we just came in Oklahoma. There are people that are truly scared for their lives, right, because of legislation, because of the social response to hateful rhetoric. And I talked to a young trans man named Alex, who was 21 years old. He was finishing junior college, and he said, every trans person that I know in the state of Oklahoma is looking for an exit strategy. Can you imagine what that is like to leave your home, your family, everything that you know, to get to a place that feels safe, that feels secure, they need what we have in this community, right? And so people like, people like Lindsay, and I'm going to name her Lindsay, um, though that's not her name. Lindsay is a client in our behavioral health clinic. Lindsay moved here from Mississippi to transition because she knew she was not safe living in Mississippi as a trans woman. She needed to be in a community where she felt safe, where she felt valued, where she felt seen for who she was so she could live her most authentic life. She needed connection points. She needed community. She needed home. 
So this coming home for me is much more than being in this community where we feel connected, where we feel apart. We now can restart this work that the center is so very committed to, to make sure everyone in our community, not just those that live in the zip codes across the Coachella Valley, but those like Alex and those like Lindsay who are looking for places across the map that they can then come and call home where they can find their connection points. So to our Akateo Club donors, thank you so much for being the points of connection for this important work. Your commitment every month of $100, $200, $300, your annual gift of $1,200, $2,400, $3,600, whatever that is, allows us to create those connection points for folks. And for those of you that are considering supporting the center as an Akateo Club donor, we need your support as well because these important bits of work that we do across this valley can't happen without this level of support. I'm humbled to see this group has grown to what it is. And so thanks to our dear friends, David Hood and George Sellers. David, thank you so much. We met my very first week in 2014. He has been such an incredibly generous donor and friend to both the center and to Ron and myself. But David and George saw that uh, this group needed to grow. So they have said, we would be willing to match for every new Ocotillo Club donor between tonight and September 30th, so the next couple of weeks, every new Ocotillo Club donor up to $24,000. So that's 20 new donors. So if you're thinking about it, Tonight's the night. Ted was being more generous, saying maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. I want to encourage you to do that tonight because um, uh, commitment is important because commitment is what makes community community. We know that we can depend on each other. So if you're interested in renewing your Ocotillo Club donorship, uh, becoming an Ocotillo Club donor, or for those that are really inspired, upping your Ocotillo Club contribution, then David and Raul can, and we're at the front uh, table. Where are we doing this? So yeah, so these guys right here, find them, raise your hands, so uh, our development folks can take care of that for you. But most of all, thank you for being our home. Thank you for the connections that you are helping us establish across this community so people can experience the same thing that we get to have here, and that's connection, and that's home. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be back. Woo!